Hey there peeps, it's Lucas here from Reb Noise Screen 1 and I'm here to give you an interesting take or my interesting thoughts that be on the BAFTA Awards 2021. Now this isn't necessarily going to be a reaction video to it as I know the awards ceremony aired this past weekend. That's for those of you who actually paid much attention and it seemed that they kind of happened almost kind of secretive in a sort of way. Now the event obviously took place virtually because of the current restrictions and this to me just further demonstrated the massive gap between the film industry and the general moviegoer because you know I've got to say this year more than ever it seems more prevalent that the film industry has no idea what the film moviegoer wants. Because although they boasted about diversity, and that's fantastic, I mean, 16 out of the 24 acting nominees were people of colour or from ethnic minorities. And that's great. There were also a record number of first-time nominees and four women nominated for Best Director. And of course, that award was won by Chloe Zhao for Nomadland, which was the big winner of the evening taken home four BAFTAs after the seven nominations that it received. But here's where the problem lies. That film has not been released in several major markets, including right here in the UK. It was screened at festivals, but it's not been released to the general public. And it's not going to be until April the 30th, which is actually after this year's Oscars. So this film would have picked up film awards before the general public have had a chance to see it in major territories, including the UK. And now look, it's not to say that Frances McDormand is not a fantastic actress. Yes, she is. She picked up the award here, for instance. And it's not to say the film's not fantastic. I'm sure it is, and I want to see it. But how is a film able to win four of the most recognised awards in the world for film? without Joe Public getting a chance to see it. And it's not alone with this. I feel that they overlooked deliberately the impact of streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime and many more just to fit their own agenda. Because although, going back to that diversity quota and that ethnic minority and you know everything that was positive with that, it felt that they still gave the awards to what I'd say traditional films and actors. One of the key points from this was that Sir Anthony Hopkins, who was nominated for Best Actor in a leading role for his role in The Father, a film which again we're waiting for a UK release I believe sometime in the summer. And he didn't actually attend the ceremony um, virtually. So just before we go into this, just to clarify that uh, the first night was hosted by Clara Ampho, you know, from BBC Radio 1. And the second night was hosted by Derma O'Leary and Edith Bauman. They were in studio or in the Royal Albert Hall, which was empty, but in a really kind of bizarre, eerie, creepy way. They had people watching from home, but they weren't displayed. So every time they said like one of their pre-written jokes, there was laughter from this virtual audience, which we were told was the film going public. Though I saw no invitation or sign-up sheet and I'm a big film fan. I mean, I present film you in. However, they were joined in studio by some award presenters, and they also had a live link to Los Angeles, uh, which was quite awkward at times, <laughs> as they were speaking to several actors and actresses who presented some of the categories, albeit virtually. All the nominees were at home, or in what I think, in the, in the case of some of them, in very posh hotel suites, um, you know, for this. And it made for some quite kind of fun, interesting moments. I mean, Daniel Kaluuya, he's got his pipes in the background. He was obviously winning, successful in winning for um, his role in uh, Judas Black Messiah. We also saw a promising young woman win two awards, including Outstanding British Film, and Best Screenplay, and Emerald Fennel. Um, she was the one who was entering from a lavish hotel suite, and um, some of the quotes from her included saying that the movie was made basically for everyone was working for a packet of crisps, um, and she had like a chocolate BAFTA award <laughs> with her, which I felt was quite fun. But obviously this led to some interesting delayed reactions to when the host would announce the winner, and then you'll see the 
varying, like kind of like Christmas lights coming on one at a time. The space of the celebrities um, light up in the kind of smattering of applause you have to give if you don't win, I guess. And, you know, while on the most part the award speeches were quite normal, but you'd have obviously Daniel Kaluuya, like I mentioned, and Chloe Sal, they both kind of thanked um, ethnic minorities. And we of course had Anthony Hopkins, who did not appear, along with Francis McDormand, they both won in the acting categories. And Anthony Hopkins, <laughs> I, you know, one of the stories I read before filming this was that he was painting his house. He turned down the invitation for the Zoom link as he felt that he wasn't going to win. His last competitive BAFTA win was 27 years ago. Um, so I can see maybe why he thought he wouldn't win it <laughs> almost three decades since he last won. And he felt that a younger actor should have the time to kind of, you know, do his speech and not be kind of overshadowed by obviously Sir Anthony Hopkins kind of staring down the lens of a Zoom camera. But he was painting his house and he didn't know he'd won really until his next door neighbours. Surprised he had neighbours. Who, who wants to live next to Hannibal Lecter? Um, his next door neighbours let out like a nice like cheer. And the 83 hour old actor kind of got on the phone to his, uh, I guess his management team, and they got him on the press call afterwards. And yeah, he won for that. Um, but yes, my point here though is that they just still did their own agenda, but try to still appease to the market, which is which is crying and screaming out that they want diversity, they want minorities recognised and that they want films that the general public have seen to be part of this discussion. And of the, the Academy Awards have tried it a few times. They've had like Black Panther be nominated for Best Picture a few years ago, but we all knew it wasn't going to win because again, the Academy has its own agenda, its own members that vote for films that tend to just not be films we've seen. But then, the main thing here, going back to this virtual ceremony, is you stripped away all of the kind of pomp and circumstance, all the kind of heart and soul of these ceremonies. You know, seeing the red carpet, seeing the packed auditorium, seeing everyone in their suits and tuxedos and dresses. And you strip that all away to essentially a work meeting where people were just wearing tuxedos at their homes, accepting awards virtually. And some of these awards, some of these films were for films that were from two years ago. And in the case of Bucky Bakray, she won Rising Star for a film that was released in 2019, her first acting gig ever, actually, in fact. You know, it's about a film which focuses on her at a different time of her life. She's now an 18-year-old actress um, and hopefully going to get some more casting roles in the future. But she's talking about a project she filmed and finished two years ago. You know, um, that being the film Rocks, which is available to watch in the UK via Netflix. So, let's just wrap this up here. So for me, you know, while I enjoyed the kind of ceremony and how it was done, I think it was good that they kept to somewhat of a time, I guess. But the issue here is, is this necessary? And if I'm being deadly honest, I don't think it is. And celebrities as a whole have taken a beating during this pandemic era because we've realised that the people that we need in this society are the shop workers, are the lorry drivers, are the delivery Uber Eats guys, are the nurses, the doctors, the teachers, you know, of society. We don't need actors sitting, preaching to us from their houses or rented hotel rooms as it may be. And I think that they overlooked the fact that people were at home streaming stuff all year and that Netflix became to many a family member. It became for many an extension of our social lives. We were talking about the Netflix series such as Tiger King. We were talking about all the great movies that came out and the fact that they overlooked Mank, The Trial of the Chicago 7, Borat, subsequent movie film and many others. It just shows that the film industry via its award ceremonies is still dictating to us that the films that matter are the ones they say do not the ones that we actually care about so that's my thoughts about the BAFTAs and to be fair a lot of it is aimed at the awards 
ceremonies as a whole. Because coming soon on the 26th of April, the 93rd Academy Awards will take place. And while this ceremony will look a little bit different, as they have, of course, denied nominees and winners from appearing via video link and have insisted on an in-person ceremony, though they have set up additional bases in London um, to minimise and reduce travel, they have said that people cannot appear via video link. So it'll be an interesting one, what will happen. They also have 15 performers who are going to present the awards, including all four of last year's acting winners will be presenting the awards for this year's acting winners. Um, so we shall see how that goes. But let us know your thoughts. You know, Do you think that more streaming movies should have been nominated? Or do you agree that the film, in, do you just think that you know the film industry doesn't speak for you and so you choose to ignore it but yeah let me know as we get on and don't forget to check out our other videos on this channel and i'll be back next week for a new edition of film you in until then don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you and goodbye